Good morning everyone and a very warm welcome to you all to our Sunday service for the 27th of September 2020. Today we are going to observe uh, our second and also last at the same time Creation Sunday. So we are going to be finishing off Creation Time which we started three weeks ago. Now we're going to begin our service by singing together all creatures of our God and King. Do sing along with us. from Exodus chapter 17 verses 1 to 7. The whole Israelite community set out from the desert of Sin, travelling from place to place as the Lord commanded. 
they camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. So they quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses replied, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? But the people were thirsty for water there, and they grumbled against Moses. They said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to make us and our children and livestock die of thirst? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, What am I to do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Go out in front of the people, take with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the staff which you struck the Nile, and go. I will stand there before you by the rock of Horeb. Strike the rock, and water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the place Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarrelled, and because they tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Today's passage is one of a series of grumblings of the people of Israel in the wilderness. They challenged Moses, and, and he increasingly gets more and more exasperated with them over the most basic of human needs, access to safe, clean water, food, and security. Those still are the most basic of human needs, and they are still threatened today, this time often by our own irresponsible and unsustainable actions and lifestyle. The reaction of the Israelites is typical as well. Who do we blame? Who do we demand should fix this? The most natural reaction to the most basic need. In both contexts, though, the one of the Israelites in the wilderness, as well as that of us, Christians living in the 21st century, we so often forget that God is the ultimate provider. In the desert, God fed, watered, and led his people for 40 years. In our case, God provides us with water, food, safety, and security, and so much more. Maybe now more than ever do we realise how much we did take for granted. We are truly blessed in abundance. It is only when fear takes over that we begin to give in to the culture of blame. We demand, we get angry. The current pandemic has been a trying time, but also a special time. So many of us have reassessed where we are what our priorities are, what activities we want to stop and what to start. This creation time, we're again invited to reassess where we are in relation to God's world, reflect on what we have done to harm God's creation, but also what we can do to protect and nurture it. And we have good examples to follow. Adam and Eve, the first people in the Garden of Eden, were placed there to tend the garden. They were there for the garden and not the garden for them. And then Abraham was blessed to be a blessing. Jesus chose the self-emptying way of humility for the sake of the world. God's people have shown us the way we are to follow too. To be there for others. And this starts with repentance. At least one third of all edible food produced across the world is never eaten. Enough food to feed two billion people. Personally, I do not think to use up all the leftovers in my fridge. And yet all the food produced, transported and stored wastes water, electricity and therefore produces greenhouse gases. Repentance means admitting to ourselves where we fall short and then taking action to make amends. So from this week, I will try to eat all the salad and radishes and beetroot rather than let them rot in my fridge. I also hope to freeze all my herbs too. When you cut them up, you can use whatever you need and the rest does not go bad, as very often it does in my fridge. You see, God provides us not just with the rock 
and the water gushing out of it. He also provides us with a stick to strike the rock with and cause water to flow. God is the provider, but also the enabler. He can change hearts. He can change lives. He is powerful and mighty. And the world belongs to God. Amen. Let us now come to God in prayer. Let us pray. God who makes us with the earth. God who gives us to the world. God with us in our struggles. Hear us stand with fears and needs and walk, hold hands, advise, encourage. We pray today for the world enveloped by the coronavirus pandemic. We remember owners of businesses who are struggling to stay afloat at this hard time and those of us who will acutely feel the loneliness of not being able to meet with another household indoors. We pray especially for Latin America, who is the worst hit area of the world. Keep the people there safe and nurses and doctors equipped to save lives. We pray for lasting peace for women, men, boys and girls who have for many years borne the burden of conflicts in the troubled African country of South Sudan. We lift the whole nation to you and pray fervently that the people of South Sudan may live in unity. This creation time we remember our neighbours of whatever species and pray for peace throughout creation. We ask your blessing upon the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland, which will now be held online the evening of Friday the 2nd of October and all day Saturday the 3rd of October. We pray for the moderator as he settles in and moderates the debates. We acknowledge our continuing divisions, including local ones, about what the priorities and the future shape of the church should be. May your will be done. We look to a greater integration of environmental concern in our life and work and seek openness to the joy of deeper fellowship with all creation. In silence, we now pray for those we pray with, acknowledging and respecting what they cannot share with us. We look for support and perseverance and some sustaining sign when we get things right. We pray for impatience, not simply to accept the way things are and pray for peace in our heart and the fuller joys of Christ. Hear us stand with fears and needs and walk, hold hands, advise, encourage. Amen. Yes. 
sing for God's power that shatters the chains that would bind us, searing the darkness of fear and despair that would blind us, touching our shame with love that will not lay blame, reaching out gently Sing for God's justice disturbing each easy illusion, tearing down tyrants and putting our pride to confusion. Lifeblood of right, resisting evil and slight, offering freedom's transfusion. Sing for God's saints who have travelled faith's journey before us, who in our weariness give us their hope to restore us. In them we of love made flesh for us. Thank you so much for your tuning in to worship with us. It's great to be together in this way when we can't, it can't be in any other Feel free to watch our eMessy Church video for today as well. Also, every Sunday we gather for fellowship at 11 a.m. on Zoom, and you can join us online or indeed phone in. So, for details on how to do so, please contact myself or Colin. And we invite everyone, wherever you are, to join in next weekend and watch the live stream of the General Assembly proceedings on the Church of Scotland website or the Facebook page. The Friday session will run from 7pm to about 9pm and the Saturday session will run from 9.15am to about 5pm and on Saturday there will be coffee and lunch breaks as well. Have a great week and hope to see you next week. In the meantime, may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you all evermore. Amen.